Today, we're going to talk about work. Growing up pushed me into chaos, and I had a lot of questions that took me decades to figure out. I didn't grow up in a traditional household where rules and regulations were enforced. I didn't grow up with a father that pushed me to be the best version of myself. I didn't have a mother to show me how things worked in the world. Dinners and breakfasts were not served at the table. I was a type of kid that had a lot of autonomy and learned everything by making mistakes. Now you're probably wondering, Zen, what is this about? I discovered work at a very young age. I delivered newspapers in second grade. I sold newspapers at traffic stops on Sundays at third. A student teacher in sixth grade sold pots and pans in seventh grade. Cashier at McDonald's in ninth grade and cooked chicken at KFC during senior year. I was glued to work. During these years, I had a lot of questions that truly stressed me out. What job is right for me? How can I make money? Why am I here? I discovered that my hard work is the only thing that can never be taken away from me. I saved up enough money that luckily, I was able to afford getting my bachelor's degree at University of San Francisco. While there, I had three jobs. I was a shuttle driver in public safety, a DJ at night, and an intern at UBS Financial. After college, I was fortunate enough to begin my career at Yelp.com followed by Pandadoc.com and a few failed startups. Okay, sorry for the quick interruption. I had to share this old failed startup. And now back to the show. Now, I work at Localize.com. Last week, I attended an event by Think Media and it made me think of all the jobs I've ever had. So today, I hope that my observation and my experiences may be of use to you. These are my top observations. I hope you like it. Let's go. I've worked at the top startups of the world and hands down, Localize has got to be the best in remote work and supporting their employees. But on top of that, they also win in the category of customer support. Back in 2020 at Localize, I still had my startup called Close One. But instead of asking me to shut my company down, they supported it. In fact, they did the complete opposite. They asked to put everything in writing down. I could work at Localize, do my job, get shit done. And all that trust has changed my mindset. Looking back at Pandoc, at Yelp, and all those jobs I've ever had, my mentality was this. How much money can I make? How can I pay my bills? How can I buy that shiny new toy? How can I get a new car? Get, 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 consume, consume, consume. So today, because of the love and the trust and the investment that Localize has put in me, my mentality is now, how do I give back? How do I give back? Because I know that my giving is my worth and that is my value. If you're interested in learning more about Localize and you want to work with me so that we can grow and end language barriers, my link is down in the description below. So check it out. If it wasn't for Localize's support, I would have never met the content creators that I personally look up to. Meet Evan Carmichael's work. Evan was always sick. He didn't fit in. He was a bad student. He had nervous tics. He was a slow learner. He failed at marriage. He was afraid to disappoint. And his parents even took him to psychologists. He was struggling and he never told anyone because he was embarrassed. He was ashamed, broke, and felt like a loser because his business was simply not working. So what did he do? He found support. He punched, kicked, and cried through 10,000 plus of videos and hard work. Now, he has over 3.48 million subscribers and each of his videos get a million views each. Oh snap, are you ever on camera? Uh, I think your purpose comes from your pain. So I think whatever you struggled with the most as a human is what you want to help other people through. And so because I struggled so much as an entrepreneur, I try to make content that I wish 19-year-old Evan could have seen. I'm 13 years in, when did I start? 2009? Across all the channels, we probably recorded 
15, 20,000 videos? Like, how do you keep going? How do you not burn out? How do you, I don't know, I mean, haven't missed an upload day in a decade. How? Well, because you feel like what you're doing matters. And so, I always feel like the content that I'm making is to help. Even this interview, like when you, she just pulled me aside, you know, if we're at lunch, I'm leaving, she's like, can I interview you? Why? Because I'm hoping that, you know, somebody watches this video and maybe that makes a shift to helping them believe a little bit more in themselves. Now meet Gary Vaynerchuk. It may seem that he exploded with the internet, but the truth is he was producing content while you and I were still in school. His video was uploaded back in 2006, and he made me think about hard work and humility. Check out Gary's first video. Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Wine Library TV. Now here's an observation. What if you did that thing that you sucked at over and over and over and over again until you got really good at it for the next 10 years of your life. Here's what Gary Vee has to say. They like to be like because they see someone doing it. I mean, the amount of people that I've watched in the last 15 years try to do me, they would crush by doing them. Everybody told me I was going to lose. I couldn't win. It, and, it, and it happened. Like, a lot of places wouldn't book me because I cursed too much. I didn't wear a suit, which was like fucking completely unacceptable 15 years ago. And like people are like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I just don't have the ability not to be me. I get comments left and right for a period of time where they're like, Gary Vee, you say the same shit. I'm like, that's right, motherfucker. <laughs> By show of hands, how many people here, the first time they ever saw me, thought I sucked and was a scam artist and a piece of shit? Raise your hands. And, and then how many people that just raised their hands were affected positively by a piece of content in your lives. That's it, that's the game. It's in our DNA to be influenced by someone's material. How else do we learn the things we know? When we watch the news, go on Facebook, pass through Times Square, we're constantly affected by content that's created by someone else. My next observation is this. We live in content. And if purpose comes from pain, then our pain is purposeful. Let's review Patrick Bet David's videos from 10 years ago and how his content has evolved simply by sharing content. So today I want to speak to you about the one word that we are taught to not bring up in discussions, whether it's business, family, dinner, table, because it always leads to arguments, and that is politics, right? <laughs> This is who you think it is. It's Sunday. Tico and I have decided to go out and get some ice cream. And I come into the truck and this is what I see. Life is about taking risks. And today I want to talk to you about four different types of risks we take. So at 13 years old, I had a, uh, <laughs> I had a kill list. Seriously. Seriously. This is going to be fun. Here's a clip of my very first uploaded video because we all start from somewhere. Kobe's worked on his craft since 13 years old. Patrick Bet David shared all types of content for over 10 years. Gary V wants us to stop being other people. And Evan reminds us that purpose comes from pain. I looked at some painful videos and some had no sound, some were goofy, a lot were wobbly. But you know what? Many of them, we were just simply having fun. So get out there, have fun, do the work, and most of all, don't be embarrassed if you make mistakes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.